Kendall, what was going through your mind on that last shot in regulation? Uh, just be a playmaker. Give all glory to God. Um, like I said before, man, I'm going to stay aggressive. I'm going to stay confident. And uh, I was able to help my team tonight. What did you change differently from this Bedlam game to the one a couple weeks ago? Um, I think just the passion that I, I play with tonight. Uh, everybody here talks about, like, the big OU, OSU rivalry. Being from California, I don't I don't know much about that. Um, so the first game, like, people say, man, we, we hate OU or things like that. And, like, I didn't have a passion or a real dislike you know, for the other university. Obviously, we, we respect them at a very high level. But um, after that game, um, seeing how the game went and being able to come back and play in Gallagher, uh, I just think I had just another level of passion. And the rivalry kind of uh, was instilled in me a little bit after the first game. Did the crowd help with that passion? Oh, definitely, definitely. Our crowd was wonderful tonight. Was it a sold out tonight? Big shout out to uh, our fans and everybody that came out to support. Through the final possession of overtime, where you guys were able to deny Trey the ball, and then it was kind of you who had to stay with him there in those final couple seconds before he tried to shoot. Yeah, uh, Coach Mike does a great job just in practice, uh, putting us in positions to guard, whether that's full court drills or in the half court. So um, I told the ref that I was going to show my hands and I wasn't going to foul. So uh, you know, obviously my teammates uh, did their job and making sure that they were in the right spot so that uh, you know when he drove that we were able to collapse and um, you know get a hand on the shot. What's the most difficult thing about guarding him? Um, he's talented. I mean, I'm not I'm not big on giving you know the, the opposite team you know too much credit, but I mean he's very talented. He's a very talented young man. Uh, but I think I think our team did a great job of staying locked in. I don't think anybody else scored double figures, so that was that was pretty good uh, by the guys. You felt like he got in your guys' heads a little bit in the old Norman game. Do you feel what you do to keep that from happening Who tonight? Trey, you get my hand. Ain't, ain't nobody getting in my head, so. so. How do you guys avoid getting involved with the emotions of the game and letting that kind of hurt you guys? I think just uh, playing poise you know, for like 40 minutes or, or uh, tonight 45, so just like playing poise, playing calm, and just like playing cowboy basketball. Jeff, from your perspective, can you take me through the play where Mitch dove, slid across the floor, and got about to shine? I mean, that's that's him, you know, right there to a T. Like, he, he makes those plays all the time, and like, uh, we, we, we need it from him, but I mean, I want to say um, I, I was in the backcourt and and I just saw him, kind of you know like like see the ball and like I already knew that you know, just like just um just how, just how him being him he just he just dove for it and got it and just uh just uh and then I want to say uh, Shine came through and got it and just scooped it in for a layup. There were like a million moments and shots and plays, but for the forty-five seconds or so left, Mitchell Solomon of all people gets a strip twenty-five feet from the basket. At a point where oh, you could take it to two possessions. Uh, just what would y'all's response to the play Mitchell Solomon made away from the basket to turn the game around? I'm trying to think what play it is because all that, all that is like a blur now almost. Like he said, that's just that, that's who Mitch is. He's he's a guy that doesn't mind doing the dirty work, doesn't mind covering for his teammates. Um, you know, with the passion and, and the energy and effort he plays with. Um, as as the four other guys on the court with him, you gotta kind of step up and match that. So, I mean, Mitch has been terrific for us, and and I believe he's gonna continue to do that, um, and we're gonna continue to follow. At a point, you guys were up twenty five to six. Did it ever kind of set in when it, the lead kept chipping further and further and closer and closer? I should say. How did you guys kind of keep your composure after such a hot start? I mean, we fighters, man. Like everybody from top to bottom is a fighter. You know, if you come watch our practice, like we compete at a high level. So, I mean, it's a game of runs. People gonna go on runs, but we are gonna go on runs as well. So, um, they were playing well, but you know, at the end of the day, we we fought and we did what you know we were capable of, and and that's taking care of home court. So, um, like I said, man, we're fighters, and that's that's what it came down to. Jeff, so what is it like just... to have three thousand of your classmates run down on them? Best feeling in the world playing in Gallagher Iba right there. Yes, Straight like that. It wasn't just Bedlam game today, it was also the number <clears throat> the ten game. Any more emotions added on top of that because it's such a special game? Yeah, coach uh definitely uh reiterated that a few times, uh before and after the game. Um and you know, when we put on the cowboy jersey, you know, we don't just play for, you know, ourselves or our families. Um there's many more people, our boosters, you know, obviously our fans and to Right, the alumni and, and to remember the 10. So 
um, you know, our condolences go out to, to everybody uh, that was affected by that. And, you know, we're going to continue to play hard, not just for, like I said, ourselves, but for everybody else as well. Jeff, for the time being, this will be your last bedlam. Is this probably the most memorable for you? No, no doubt. No question it is. Kind of the all-time games that you played at Gallagher. Uh, this may have to be the best one, I think, in my opinion. Why is that? Cause you know we we fought you know for 40, 45 minutes and it was just so much emotion and, and like so much passion and pride from from us tonight. So, Jeff, you've been through some coaching changes. When you see your head coach grab the mic at the end of the game and address the crowd like you did, what does it mean to you guys? You know, I mean, a lot because, I mean, he loves the fans. You know, that's something that he really, like, you know, like uh, focuses on. But, I mean, like he, he has so much passion and, and stuff like that. So, I mean. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Are we ever going to not give up a career high to somebody? I mean, 48 for that guy? No, I'm just kidding. That, that kid's phenomenal. Um, great, great college basketball game. Tremendous. Um, hats off to Coach Kruger for, for having this team come in here and, and fight the way they did. And even after they got down 12 to, you know, they take on his personality. They don't flinch. Uh, they continued to fight and, and came back and took the lead. But really, really, really happy for my kids um, as they continue to show what they're about and who they are um, as people, guys that just keep fighting for each other, keep fighting for the culture that we're trying to build, keep fighting to try to help people understand that, you know, we got a pretty good basketball team. Um, we can compete with anybody in the country. We talk about that every day. Uh, we, we have set no ceiling for this team because we believe no matter what, whatever situation we get in, we can, we can win if we play the right way, if we're committed to, to competing the way we had today. Um, obviously, the rebounding was a little frustrating there. And then, you know, Trey Young did what great players do. He put on an absolute show for, for everybody who was here and everybody who was watching, wherever they were. Um, so um, I hope we don't have to play against him too many more times. <laughs> Um, and he's going to have a phenomenal career as a uh, as a college basketball player and moving forward as a pro. You, you mentioned, I think, maybe last week, Kendall Smith's sort of humility and moving to the bench and, and being supportive. And tonight, he was sort of the center of two of the biggest moments of the game, his three, and then him defending Young at the end. Yeah, I mean, he is, uh, in a lot of ways, the epitome of what our team is, right? Um, we've had a lot of tough moments uh, for whatever reason at different times. And those kids don't quit. They don't give up. They don't feel sorry for themselves. They don't listen to what everybody else is telling them. I'm sure there are people telling Kendall that coach should not have benched you or that you should be playing more or you're better than this guy. And he never takes into that. He came into my office and said, hey, coach, help me. How can I get better? Let's watch some film. What am I not doing well? Uh, and I said, listen, I believe in you. I remember when I went to Oakland and saw him the first time and sat down with him, the message was, you can come here and help us establish a great foundation to have success in the Big 12 for a long time. And you know, he stayed true to that. He works his butt off, just like most of those guys do all the time. Um, and he's a guy who was ready for the moment. You know, He didn't play much at the end of the second half. And I felt 100% confidence in him not being afraid of that moment. You never know if a kid's going to make a shot or not. I mean, ball's in the air, you don't know. But I knew he wanted the ball. I knew he wanted the opportunity to go make a play. And he made a big one for us. Isn't it interesting, Mike, that maybe the biggest defensive play Mitchell Solomon's ever made here was 25 feet from the basket? Yeah, not, it's not surprising at all. Um, you know, a lot of you guys honestly haven't been here very long. <laughs> but I've been saying that since, I don't know, November 10th, that he's the most valuable person in the locker room in terms of he's about what I'm about. You know, it doesn't matter. One for five, you know, no threes, no free throws, five offensive rebounds, effort. It's effort. The biggest play of the game, still in the ball from who will probably be the national player of the year at half court, and then absolutely laying out there and giving everything he has so his team can have a chance to win. So his team can have a chance to win. That's what he's about, and I love him for it because he gives me a chance 
when I go out and recruit to show people what this program is about, what it always has been about, and what it will continue to be about. Talk me through your double floor slap there after Jeff put you guys up two at the free throw line. Is that just to pump up your guys, or are you that into the game as well? Yeah, I think I was just into the game. Um, there's no, there's nothing to it except you know, I want my guys to know I'm with them. I'm with them. And if I could be down there, that's what the stance would look like. <laughs> um, we needed to sit down. At that point, we, we desperately needed a stop. Um, and our guys locked in and were able to get one. Coach, is, there, is there a moment throughout the game where you just kind of look around, sold out crowd, and you're like, man, this, this is pretty cool, pretty awesome? Yeah, honestly, um, I was asked that the other day. I really hadn't had time. I mean, there's so much to, to, to think about. But I'll, I'll be honest, the first when we went to overtime, it was the first time I just kind of looked around and, and took it all in. Like, this is pretty cool, you know. Twelve months from twelve months prior to now, I'm not sure if three people in this room knew who I was, <laughs> you know. And from where I come from, not that it's some great story, but for the people to embrace me and for these kids to fight the way they do, makes me feel really proud. Coach, why did you want to address the crowd um, after the win today? Uh, it's important that our fans understand that that this is their program. Most of the people in this building, night in and night out, who aren't students, went to school here. Wherever they work, the bank, uh, post office, they run a business, they farm, whatever, they have a degree somewhere in their house or in their office from this university. And I want them to always know that they're part of this, and they're a big part of our success. Um, in a lot of ways, they willed us to, to make plays because of their energy. Um, and our guys never gave up because they look around and they see those people and they know what it means to fight for them. Uh, so just I want our fans to know that, that we appreciate them and that if they continue to bring it, we're going to give them 1,000% effort. Uh, we're going to represent Oklahoma State University in a first-class manner at every turn, not just on the court, uh, but in this community. Uh, and, and we want them to be proud of what, you know, what they represent. Remember the 10 game on top of that also. Just what is that emotion like? Um, it's hard. Um, you know, I was a long way away from Stillwater, Oklahoma, 17 years ago today. Um, but I heard about it because uh, I was a college basketball player, and it kind of reverberated throughout the country. It was a really unfortunate situation. Obviously, people lost their lives, and families uh, were totally changed you know, forever. Um, but this community and this university has embraced those families, and those families has, have embraced that mindset that this is still a part of who they are. I got a chance to visit with a lot of them earlier this morning before the game. Uh, and I want them to know that the, the, the losses that they experience aren't in vain, that we carry those people with us uh, forever. You mentioned Trey's 48 points when he came in, but he came on 39 shots. So even though he scores 48, he'd probably take that, right? Getting Josh shot him. <laughs> it's hard to say you're going to take 48 from a guy. But I will say what I do like is no one else scored in double figures. Uh, so I think he worked really hard to get that 48. Now, for about four minute stretch, everything looked easy. Um, and as a coach, you got to fight yourself from trying to force him to make plays for other people because he's very capable um, to, to see Brady Manick, who's going to be a really good player in this league for a long time, go from having 28 points and six for eight from three. I'm not sure he took a dribble in the game in Norman and he had 28 points. You can't let Trey have 25 and 10 and him get 28 because now everybody's feeling good, everything's easy. Uh, so for us to eliminate some of the effectiveness of the other guys is what gave us a chance. What's your thoughts on, uh, on Shine's job on Darden Trey? He, was, he did a great job. I mean, you know, Trey Young's the best college basketball player since Steph Curry. And, and I don't think it's close um, because of the way he makes other people better. Uh, he's elevated that team who was pretty much all together last year uh, and didn't have the type of success that they're having to being a national championship contender. Um, but Sean wanted the challenge, and his length gave us a chance because even when you get separation from Sean, he can still get his hand up and at least make you shoot over it. You know, there were a couple times where Brandon was caught on him, and he makes that same move, and you know, the vision is clear <laughs> at the basket uh, because of the size advantage. But... You know, proud of Sean for wanting the challenge and continuing to compete the way he did for the whole game. You've talked a lot about attacking the bucket recently in, in Big 12 games. Were you pleased with kind of the 
how, how they attacked versus how many threes they shot? Or? Yeah, it was. Um, you know, we wound up taking 30 threes. I have to go back in the film and watch. You know, I try not to evaluate the actual game until I see it, but I, I thought we tried to attack the rim. Uh, we didn't get to the free throw line quite as much as I would have liked. Um, but And I did think that most of the threes we took were, were good threes. You know, Jeff's going to mostly take the most, most of the time. Um, and Lindy, I think, was 0 for 4 in the first half, so he didn't take one in his, uh, 0 for 3 in the first half, so he only took one. But uh, we got the right guys taking the right shots, uh, and I felt good about the way we attacked them. You guys win today. Uh, Iowa State kills Tech. How crazy is this league? I don't know. I mean, it's the best college basketball that you'll see anywhere. Uh, I think there are 10 NCAA tournament teams in this league. I believe that. I think that anybody in our league can get into the NCAA tournament and win a game. Anybody. Um, I think there's that much quality players, coaching, uh, competitiveness um, throughout the league. And so it doesn't surprise me that Iowa State would win at home. You know, it, it's always a hard place to win for anybody. Um, maybe the margin kind of is shocking a little bit, uh, especially the way Tech's been able to play. They went in the Allen Fieldhouse and won pretty convincingly. Um, but it shows you there's a lot of balance. Um, and that's what it's going to be like for another, whatever, eight more games, nine more games. <laughs> how mentally exhausting does that make it? I mean, how, how do you as a coach approach facing overtime here, two-point game, two-point game, overtime, two-point game? Like, how do you handle that? Uh, you handle it like you handle anything. I mean, you just try to prepare your guys as much as possible for the task at hand. Um, tomorrow, at whatever time we convene to start getting ready for tech, we'll have to learn from this game and put it behind us. Um, and that's what it takes, you know, to, to be successful because it's not like we found this great rhythm and consistency playing on a night-in and night-out basis. We haven't figured out this road thing yet. Uh, we talked to our team. We don't get to play any NCAA tournament games in this building, unfortunately. So we've got to go prove that we're capable of going and, and finding a way to win on the road. And so we've got to learn from this, put it behind us, and start getting ready for a really, really talented and tough uh, Texas Tech team on Tuesday. How do you take the energy from this game and, and carry it forward without holding on to it? It's hard. I mean, that's the delicate balance. You've you got to enjoy this. I, I mean, I don't. winning's hard anywhere. It's certainly uh, at this level against the type of competition and coaches and all that stuff. Uh, so you have to enjoy it. You know. You win by one or you win by 15 and you enjoy it the same, but you know that this game isn't going to help us at all on Tuesday at, at, in Lubbock, Texas. So um, we got to find a way to take a couple things that we did well here, build on those, learn from the things we didn't do well. We got kicked on the glass pretty, pretty badly in the second half. That can't happen if we want to have success on the road. Um, so there's a good balance there, but you know, winning's really hard. I, I, I want my guys to enjoy it as much as possible. I want to go back to that last play. Instead of sticking a, ball to the, a guy on the ball to defend, you put him behind Trey and forced him to, obviously they had to kick it to someone else. Is that just the chess match in the game that you had to play, especially with a guy like that that, was, that had 48 at the time? Yeah, I mean, the chances of him not getting the ball, I mean, pretty slim. And when he gets it, he's shooting it. So the thought process is make him work as hard as he can and, and constantly have to feel – a sense of pressure on him. We didn't want him to catch it on the run. We didn't want him to catch it with momentum going to his basket. I thought the two guys on him, Jeff and uh, Kendall at the time, did a good job of making him have to ding and, and dunk to try to get open. And then they did a good job of keeping him going east-west. He got all the way to the other sideline before he was able to get a good crack at the basket. But then, again, just like Kendall shot, at some point you may expect him to make that shot <laughs> as tough as it was. Um, and today we were fortunate that he didn't. They gave you a zone look towards the end of the first half that you guys kind of struggled with. How do you get a team out of a zone? Make shots. <laughs> and we haven't particularly shot the ball well from three yet this year. Um, at some point you guys are going to get tired of me saying I think we're a good shooting team because the numbers have never bared it out. Um, but we got some good looks. I mean, we got a great look for Kendall in the corner. I mean, he missed it. We got a couple good shots for Sean and Jeff. And I, I can't have those guys overthinking that. They come in and they work hard. I need them to feel comfortable taking those shots when they're open. And, you know, I'll continue to believe and, until we never make them, which we got a few more games to figure it out, uh, that we'll eventually start making them at a pretty good clip. Anything else for Coach? All right, thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. <clears throat>